Britain's industrial skill is on parade. As the finest and latest British cars go on show at Earl's Court in the first motor exhibition for ten years, orders pour in from all over the world. Ten million pounds worth of goods are booked on the first day. Total overseas sales are expected to exceed 70 million pounds. For the home motorist, it's a different story. While foreign buyers can get immediate delivery, Britons wait anything up to three years. Despite that, and the fact that most people cannot afford these luxury models, nearly 20,000 enthusiasts crowd the show when the Duke of Gloucester was at the opening. This exhibition is Britain's shop window for the international motoring world. The new cars are a great advance in looks and performance. By modernizing body styles, home manufacturers have answered long-standing complaints that British designs were too conservative. Low prices and low petrol consumption are now likely to outstrip foreign competitors. The general trend in cars now is grace with power. Only a few are unchanged. The Rolls-Royce is one. Acknowledged as the best car in the world, it adds prestige to Britain's name. In spite of everything, British car builders once again put on a show to make your mouth water. The Vauxhall features a luggage boot that opens by press button and lifts at the touch of a finger. In fact, everything's made so easy that you've no excuse for not having a car, except that you can't get one. Here's a nippy little Fraser Nash with a petrol tank just where you can watch operations, under the front mudguard. Sensation of the show is the new Austin 7, long-delayed successor to the famous baby that made nearly everyone a motorist. But of course, there's the Daimler if you want to do without something really expensive. The new Barclay Caravan has a sunroof. It's a two-decker deluxe job. Costs quite a bit, of course, but look what you get for your money. Even more revealing is the X-ray Hillman Minx exhibit. Don't ask us how it's done. Go to Earl's Court and see for yourself. At Earl's Court, the Jaguar 100 mile an hour saloon catches the eye at the motor show. The engine was proved in the sports two-seater in races this year. And that's a real test. Ford's feature this year is the oversquare design. Here's the Zephyr 6 with a lid off to show you the works. And here's the console with most of Big Brother's good points. Triumph feature the Mayflower. And that name's a good start off for the American market, isn't it? So you can see the dashboard, the wheel spokes are offset. From America comes the Nash Air Flight, planned to make a home from home on long distance runs. Already famous in America is the Austin. The A40 Sports ought to keep up the good work. Morris feature the minor four-door saloon, with the Ford console the cheapest at the show, if you can get one. Going to the other extreme, how about the Rolls? So long as you've got to do without a car, why not do without the best? looked like a motorist dream of heaven, the motor show at Earl's Court. The new Rover model took the eye when Pathé previewed the show before the official opening. But more than 200 cars competed for attention. The cutaway twin camshaft MGA laid bare all the works, while a gold-plated Austin Healey with mink seat covers adds a touch of luxury to motoring. The home cruiser on an Austin chassis gives caravan comfort without having to tow anything. Plenty of headroom and an excellent cooker. No need to worry if hotels are full. The smallest caravan can be towed by a bubble car. Apparently roomy enough, in fact, a marvel of space saving. Mind your head when you get out. But if you do hanker for something a shade larger, there's the Beverly Super Size, bigger than some flats. With a full-size bathroom, a single bedroom and a large double, the Beverly really does amount to home comfort on the road. The show's most expensive car is the Rolls-Royce convertible. Sign a check for just over £8,300 and there's no need to fear a rainy day. Before we say goodbye to all this, there's the Aston Martin. 
In the right sort of pace, it'll do 140 miles an hour. If you want more, try the Comet. The event of the year for the motoring enthusiast, whether he can afford a new car or not, the Motor Show at Earl's Court. This year, there are plenty of new ideas out of old stables, including the Conquest, Daimler's first two-seater drophead coupe. The MG Magnet, one and a half liter, is very cleverly displayed. And here's the Austin A105, bigger sister of the A90. This is the first Austin model to have two pedal control. And on the Jaguar stand, the beautifully proportioned Mark 8, which is roomier than you'd think. Rover presents the shape of things to come in their T3 gas turbine. Not yet in production, of course, but proof that Britain is taking the lead in this revolutionary development. The Singer Gazelle is closely related to its stable companions, the Hillman Minx and Sunbeam Rapier. From America comes the Buick Centurion, a very opulent looking car, at present for display only. The makers don't even hint at the price. It has everything, except oddly enough a steering column. The steering is remote control. You can buy the Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud with a fitted radio telephone and coffee machine. What are you waiting for? Bring out your checkbooks. New this year at the Motor Show is the Morris Mini Minor, its engine across the frame, a novel, appealing feature. The new Austin 7 is its twin sister. Also new this year is the Chevrolet Corvair, in a class the Americans call compact. That is, reasonable in size and running cost. Russia makes her Earl's Court debut. We sell a lot of goods to the Soviets, so we have to admit two invasions into the motor field. In most categories, Britain is well ahead of competition. The Triumph Herald, with everything easy to get at, will do close on 50 miles to the gallon at cruising speeds. The Aston Martin showed to advantage, Miss World helping. And with the Bristol Zagato, Richard Todd had no complaints. A quality car for the fast driver, the sort of automobile we shall see to advantage on the new motorways. The Sunbeam Alpine is in the 100 mile an hour class. And from a famous stable, the Renault Floride. Build it yourself if you aspire to a Fairthorpe Electron Miner. And when you've tightened the last bolt, you can hit up 90 miles an hour. All your own work. At a little over 7,000 pounds comes the Big Bentley. Most expensive car in the show, with all the extras you can think of, fishing rods included. And for a moderate price, the new Anglia. There's something for nearly every purse at the Motor Show.